I've seen a lot of great horns lately at living history events, muzzleloading matches. And uh, I actually bought a couple of decent horns. And it just so happened that American Frontiersman magazine wanted me to do an article on contemporary horn makers, which I'm working on now. And then as part of the article, my editor uh, suggested maybe I should make my own horn. And believe me, I am in no way artistic, but, you know, you look at enough of these nice things and you think, well, I'll take a crack at it. So this is my first attempt at doing any sort of a customized powder horn. I'll take you through the steps as I'm working them. Now, I would not have a clue how to work on a powder horn if it was not for this book, Recreating the 18th Century Powder Horn by Scott and Kathy Sibley. This is a great book. It's short, very clear. It's written in so simple and clear a language that even I can understand it. Uh, and basically, it's a step-by-step -step guide. So I would very much recommend it if you're going to do any horn work. All right, so right off the bat, let me tell you, I kind of cheated a little bit. Uh, I decided not to go with just a raw cow horn uh, because I had a horn, uh, which you're looking at right here, which has a nice shape, but it's very plain. There's, there's nothing about it. And I always wanted to do something with this horn. And this happens to be the horn that I use for my TVM Fowler. So instead of a raw horn, I use this one, which means that the plug is already installed. And pretty much that's about the only difference is not having to knock the scale off of it and put a plug in. Uh, but this is my starting point. All right, the first step in working on a powder horn is to have a place to work. This is really simple. I just took a wooden dowel, a piece of leather, that I just cut a little hole in. And this is just a piece off a worn out moccasin. Because the way you work on the horn is you'll keep it pressed against this post while you're working. So pretty simple and the leather is just to keep anything from getting scratched up. Now the next step is to put some borders on and I just used uh, duct tape that I cut down. And these are going to be the lines where I'm going to start shaping uh, the horn. So this is going to be kind of the base of where the colored and shaped portion is going to be. This one is where the, uh, the thong goes on to hold it uh, to the strap. So there's already a groove cut in this because I'm using a horn that you know was already made. Ordinarily, you, if you work with a horn from scratch, there'd be nothing here. So it'd be a little bit easier for you. I'm trying to stay on either side of a wide groove. And I want to put a lip on the spout. Uh, so this is where I'm going to be doing that. So it's all taped up. Now we can start uh, cutting the horn. The next step is to saw lightly with a hacksaw right around the tape lines. And that's going to form the border of your work. So I've scored all my lines and now I'm ready to start shaping the horn. Well the next step is to take a file and bring those rings into shallow relief. Well, this horn, which was made by an actual professional horn maker, gives you some idea of the effect I'm going to try to achieve on the end of my horn. So, this horn is cut in uh, an octagon shape uh, here for this whole tip. And that is what I'm trying to create on my horn. So, I've marked off eight divisions and it's all done by eyeball because I really can't measure that well on this surface. And now I'm taking uh, taking rasps and I'm filing those surfaces flat until I get an octagon shape. So that's that's where we're at and uh, I'm doing the the top two right now and since they are on the concave part of the horn I'm using the round portion uh, of my rasp 
to get in there and I'm just trying to get these good and sharp and then I'll move on to the other flats. I filed on the octagon flats I know it's probably a little bit hard to see in this light and I decided I didn't want to do that for the tip so what I'm doing with this is I'm turning it down to a smaller diameter and I want to make it cylindrical and the way I'm doing that is just by taking my four-way rasp and I'm just making a pass as I spin this thing what I'm trying to do we'll see how well it's showing up is I'm trying to eliminate the taper up here so it doesn't like go in a continuous taper to the tip and make this a smaller diameter cylinder and then there'll be a lip over here so that's what I'm shooting for we'll see if I get it I turned it as well as I could with uh, with the files and now I'm using emery cloth and I'm trying to round out the profile of it get all the rasp marks off make sure it's nicely rounded the problem with this is it's really hard to hold one of these horns in a vise so makes it tough to find a stable position but we're coming along and hopefully let's see get it up here I think you can see we got quite a, uh, a difference from the way it started off and hopefully this won't come out too bad um, right now I'm using a, uh, a scraper and I'm getting all the rasp marks out of each of these flats just polishing it up now what I've been doing since I finished this off, I will just show you, is uh, you can see I've turned the tip down to a cylinder, stepped it down quite a bit. And I did that with files and then I used my uh, Turner's sanding pack and this has a variety of grits of emery cloth and I just kept going around and around until I had it uh, pretty much polished up the way that I wanted so now I've got to concentrate on getting these flats squared away before we can move on to the next step You might be wondering what I'm using for a scraper. This is a flex cut and uh, I got them from the woodwork shop and they work fantastically. So I'm using this one which has the straight edge and they all mount. They're interchangeable. They mount in this handle. There are a whole variety of shapes and I'm using this one with the, this broad tip. I'm just holding it in my hand to kind of put the, the finish on there once I've got it shaped up the way I want. So anyway, this is uh, this is what I use. I use these on gun stocks too. So here's what the horn looks like up to this point. The uh, octagon flats are all scraped clean, spout is turned, and we're ready to go to the next step which is called engrailment. Well, the process I'm doing now is called engrailment. And um, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a gouge and I'm chipping out 
the horn in a pattern uh, around the edge. And when everything is said and done, and I'm kind of working upside down here on the viewfinder, when everything is said and done, it's going to look like the top of a castle turret. It'll be crenellated. Uh, so, if you can see, i got a couple of the gouges started here. And they're a little bit different dimensions because I was trying to figure out uh, what would work going around the horn. So, I figured this dimension right here is actually the better one. So, what I did is I took a pair of wing dividers and I went around the horn. Oops, I gotta get this where you can see it. Went around the horn and just marked those spots, and, and that's where I'm going to take out my divots. Now this is better done with two people, but you can't always uh, can't always have everything. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you. Using those gouges, like the Sibley book tells you to do, for me came out terrible. I mean, unbelievably bad looking. So bad that I ended up filing the flats farther back to erase all of that. So I had to file the flats back another half inch and start over again. And what I did is I used a small sanding drum on a Dremel tool. So we'll probably never get into the, uh, the Horner's Guild uh, with technique like that, but that actually worked. So this is what the engrailment looked like when I was done with that. The little spots that you see that's done just by pressing your knife tip against the horn and twirling the knife around until it just drills a little bitty hole. Okay, the basic engrailing is done. Uh, really didn't come out quite as good as I had hoped, but I guess for a first try, could be worse, you know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just uh, I'm just taking a pencil and I'm just marking. A little dot kind of on each of these little crenellations here and what I'm going to do is I'm just taking a little exacto knife and I'm just gonna spin it around try to get it so you can see it I'm gonna spin it around in that dot and just drill out a little hole. So I'm going to do that for each of these. And when I dye it, I'm just spinning it. And when I dye the horn, dye is going to get into each of those and leave a nice little spot. So I'm just going to go around and do that all around the surface of the horn. Well, last night I dyed uh, the tip of the horn black and I just used Rit dye, uh, a couple of bottles of it, a bunch of water in a, um, a pineapple juice can, real tall one, so I could stick the entire horn in it. And you've got to get it boiling, let it, let it get hot, and then sit the horn in it for about an hour. And uh, most horns, people dye a dark brown or some shade of brown. I dyed this black because the tip of this horn was a natural black and if I dyed it a lighter color brown it would have just looked funny so I had to go I had to go with black. So what I've got to do now is scrape off all the dye that got down on the horn which will be the next thing that I'll do. Right now I've got to get all the black dye out of areas where it doesn't belong and in order to do that I'm using my uh, my scraper and just working carefully here at the end. And we just have to work all around the horn that way. After it's all scraped down, this is what the horn looks like.
and I could stop right here. Uh, and it looks pretty good. I think there's quite a difference between what we had before and what we've got now. But uh, I, I think I'm going to go on and do some scrimshaw uh, design work on it and then dye the large body of the horn uh, kind of a yellowish brown antique color. So that'll be phase two of this project. So I'm just going to leave you with the before and after pick as we sign off so you can remember what the start and finish of the project looked like so far.